is to convert polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. All right? And I think that is understanding conversion between polar and rectangular helps us understand how to graph this. So think about, again, what we did. Think about what we did earlier at the beginning of class. We took this coordinate point on the unit circle, and then when we multiplied it by its magnitude, or like a different radius, we just multiplied that value. And we ended up coming up with an idea that r should equal our, our, our point is the same thing as the radius times cosine of theta and r times sine of theta. Yes? Like we came up with that. Like that works. And therefore we said, well, could we really just graph it then with like rings if we just did r and theta? Right? So this, what's helpful about this is here is your rectangular coordinate. That's your polar coordinate. They're going to give you the same coordinate point. Yes? Like, for instance, um, this, like if I wrote this as 2, 30 degrees, like 2, 30 degrees is right there, right? Or if I did um, square root of 3, 1, you guys can see here that's 1, and like that is at like square root of 3. Yes? So the coordinate point and polar points are the exact same. One, they're just on different systems to graph them on, OK? So what's really important about this is let's take this point right now and let's just convert it to rectangular form so we understand where it is on the quadrant system. So I'm going to take this point. If I want to rewrite it as a rectangular point, I'm going to write this point as negative 1 cosine of pi halves, negative 1 times sine of pi halves. Would you guys agree that's the rectangular form of that? Now let's see, think about this rectangular form. Well, cosine of pi halves, pi halves is, if we look at the unit circle, pi halves is 90 degrees, right? So the cosine of pi halves is 0, 0, comma, pi, sine of pi halves is 1, so that becomes a negative 1. I'll give you your test in a second. Just have a seat. So the point for D is all the way down here. But that gets confusing, doesn't it? Because if you were to think about this as 1 half, you would just think of, well, well Mr. McLogan, 1 half's up there. So why is it like down here, right? Isn't that confusing? No, it's not confusing? Well, it confuses a lot of people, especially when you graph. Like, if you forget about the negative, if you were just to graph pi halves, you would say it's up here. But what happens is this negative, you guys got to think, that's like a scalar multiple. Right? And again, the way that I can like visually, if we go back to, remember how I was connecting so many things with vectors? If you guys think of a vector, let's say this vector here is AB. What happens when I multiply that vector times a negative by a scalar multiple of a negative? Where did that graph go? Well, this now becomes negative A comma negative B. Right? When I do negative A, B. Right? Because you distribute that negative to both one of those terms. So what's important about this is because a lot of students will look at this and say, Mr. McClellan, well, radius cannot be negative 1. Well, yeah, your radius is not negative 1. The radius is still a value of 1. But you got to think this is representing, this is like a, um, a direction. This is taking you this distance. It's not taking you to the distance is going to negative 1. The distance is still 1. But now what this is doing is it's kind of changing the direction like we did with vectors. Right? So we're changing the direction. So when this is negative, what that's doing is, it's taking 1 comma pi halves, which would be right here. It's taking 1 comma pi halves, and it's, ref and it's going in the opposite direction, which would be down there. Is that the the well, when you have a negative. Yeah. OK. And again, the best way I can say to check your work, if you graphed it correctly, convert it to rectangular form and make sure it's in the right spot. Because I think you guys visually, you understand rectangular coordinates. Like you know if, something, if two coordinates are both positive, it's in the first quadrant. If both, coordinates, if both coordinates are negative, you know it's in the third quadrant, right? So if you, if you write something in rectangular form, you'll know which quadrant it is. And therefore, you'll know if the polar point is in the right quadrant. And if not, then obviously you did something wrong or there's an issue. Yes? Oh, you mean right? I'm gonna get into I'm gonna get into writing different forms next. I'll I'll get to that exact kind of question next. Yes. So would pi two also be negative? Pi halves could also be negative. Yes. yes. 